with fast funding up to $10,000 available through net credit. Our online application process was designed to get the money you need quickly if approved. You can borrow an amount that meets your needs and repay in a way that works for your financial situation. And we report on-time payments to credit bureaus, so you can build credit history as you repay. See what net credit can do for you today. Check your eligibility without affecting your credit score at netcredit.com. All net credit loans and lines of credit are offered by a member of the net credit family of companies or one of our lending partners. Visit netcredit.com slash partners for more information. If you have bills and debt piling up, a personal loan through NetCredit can provide funding up to $10,000 to help you get back on track if eligible. Visit netcredit.com today. All net credit loans and lines of credit are offered by a member of the net credit family of companies or one of our lending partners. Visit netcredit.com slash partners for more information. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson. Hey, I'm Adam Carolla. Hi, my name is Penn Gillette. Not only listening, I'm the guest. I'm a Penn and Teller, and I am the fourth listener. And I am the fourth listener. And that must make me at least the fourth listener. To keep our three listeners coming back, we must be doing something right. And if you're the fourth listener, we thank you for the support. You can get every episode with no ads at patreon.com slash David C. Smalley and take advantage of your fourth listener status. And we're going to sue David Smalley for slander. With a world divided, it's time to resurrect nuance and remember the importance of conversation. He's an actor, he's a comedian, and he'll make you think. This is David C. Smalley. What's going on, Javi Lobby? It's your boy, Javier, Javier, with the Javier, Javier Show. Make sure you say it twice. Tonight, I got something special for y'all, and I am going to try to put on my big boy pants tonight and have a real serious conversation with two guys that I consider to be very close friends and who helped motivate me and were there with me from the very beginning. Uh, we disagree on a lot of subjects when it comes to politics, but we're still friends. Um, both of them are comedians. Uh, you might know David C. Smalley. Uh, he hosts the podcast. David C. Smalley used to be Dog with Debate. He has a lot of deep conversations about politics, but it was mostly surrounded by religion. Um, and I've been on his show. He invited me on his show early on to actually have a conversation about Donald Trump and things of that sort. And we've been friends ever since. Michael Regilio is also a comedian, and he's been doing this thing and making head waves. And y'all can find both of these guys on Twitter, and you can find them on the David C. Smiley podcast. So they called in, and I'm going to get them on here, and we're going to have a real genuine conversation about gun control. And it's more so of me trying to get to the bottom of what liberals actually mean when they say gun control and exactly what that looks like. So without further ado, I'm going to get them in here and we're going to have this conversation. So David C. Smiley and Michael Regilio in the house. What's How up, man? Doing? How you doing? I'm pretty good. I can't complain. Uh, so how's life for y'all before we get into this uh, very serious conversation that needs to be had? And thank you for having it. I'm great. I'm really great. Uh, I think like David, uh, the thing that makes me great is getting out there and being creative and I get a, a chance to do it on a regular basis. So as long as you see me posting shows, I'm happy. Yeah, same, man. I just did uh, six straight shows in Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, those people are crazy, uh, but I can't <laughs> wait to go back. And uh, then I get to go go to Vegas, and then we come home, and then I'm leaving for Vegas again in the morning. It's just it's so fun doing what we do. So uh, if yeah. if I believed in something religious, I would say I was blessed. But I guess I'm just really lucky, and I work my ass off. Second uh, one being probably the thing that accounts for maybe. most people's successes. <laughs> yeah, probably, but also more luck. so than Jesus. Luck, luck, luck. Yeah, luck plays it. A little bit of Jesus. You don't know, little Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> You don't know. Hey, like like some popular Christians will say, we all find out when we get there, right? Yeah, <laughs> we except we, if we there's no you to get there and no there to get to. Okay, then you know no what? One finds you it. know what? <laughs> if you're coming here with some secular agenda, just get out of yeah. here with that. Just yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like I was saying in my introduction. I know that we disagree about the gun issue. I've had you on before, David, and we had like a serious back and forth about gun control. Um, mass shootings, for some reason, they, they're constantly happening. We see them time and time again in the news. Uh, recently, we saw one in Texas. Uh, before that, Buffalo. Um, there's a big conversation about 
gun control, gun control, gun control. And we talk about AR-15s, assault weapons. We talk about, and the conservatives and liberals, we just can't see eye to eye on a lot of these subjects, right? And I recently did a video about how the gun debate is a lie. All we do is we bicker back and forth and we never get anywhere. And then we wait for the next mass shooting to happen. And then we're back in this circle, this loop of everybody yelling at each other. So I'm trying to extend the olive branch and first start a conversation by seeing what exactly do liberals mean when they say gun control. And each one of you can kind of give me uh, a summary of exactly what you would like to see when you say gun control and what exactly does that look like? And I'll ask you some questions to kind of flush it out. Yeah. So I'll go first. Um, I, I, so I wrote an article uh, several years ago called why gun nuts lie. I know from experience. I was born and raised in Texas. I played with guns my whole life as a kid. I had a concealed carry permit in Texas as an adult. I mean, I walked around grocery stores, banks, everything. I took my family to the gun range. There's videos on the internet of my daughter shooting guns when she was, I think, seven or eight years old. Um, I was that guy. And... Um, uh, people say, oh, you moved to California and got soft. No, <laughs> I, I got sick and tired of seeing um, ridiculous statements from the right saying that there should be no gun legislation, that a right is a right is a right is a right. And it kind of reminded me of the Bible in a way. Javier, it reminded... Sorry, Javier, Javier. Be sure to say it twice. <laughs> uh, it reminded yeah. me of the Bible. When I say that, I mean people holding on to these ancient ideas, not taking into account that things have changed. It took two or three minutes to load a gun when these laws were written, when these rights were given. Uh, it wasn't this, you know, there was no such thing as an AR-15. There was no such thing as military grade uh, weapons. The person next door could have the same rifle that the soldier could have. It was just a completely different world. And I look at it and in my article, I laid out some things that I basically said, I think it should be treated like cars. Why do you have to have a license to drive a car? Well, it's because you could kill somebody if you don't know what the hell you're doing. So I, when I say common sense gun control, I, I think there should be mandatory training. I'm not saying you can't have it. There should be mandatory training, mandatory licensing, and some restrictions on what you're allowed to own. Some restrictions on sizes of the magazines, things like that. And I think most people, I think like 86% of the NRA members agree that there should be stricter background checks and to get rid of gun hole loopholes. And I'm kind of uh, gun hole loopholes, gun show loopholes, where like a 14 year old kid can walk, walk into a gun show and leave with a rifle. There's video evidence of this happening. Um, so, and then they go, oh, well, these liberal states where there's all this stuff happening, th there's still gun violence in those liberal states. Yeah, because there are conservative states literally right next door where someone can walk into a gun show, buy some sort of assault rifle, leave that day with it without a lot of background check or, or, or having to show credentials or passing any sort of psyche eval or anything or waiting period. They could be totally pissed and literally drive across state lines and then and shoot up a school. And so regardless of the laws of the local liberal or Democrat run cities, as long as we're all connected, you know, there's really no way to manage it. So I want it, I want to make it more difficult for people who are struggling with mental health issues to get guns. I want to make it more difficult for people who have an ax to grind and who are angry with somebody to just go buy a gun and do something crazy with it. And I think the kinds of guns we need to protect ourselves are not the kinds of guns that fire 100 rounds. That's No one's ever used something like that for home protection. I think that's absurd. So I don't say give all the guns away. I don't say buy back every gun. Not yet, but I'm starting to consider that. But <laughs> at this point, I just want I just want more common sense legislation like we would anything else. If it's dangerous and you can kill somebody with it, there needs to be more checks and balances. That's all I think we're asking for. I think David did a pretty good job there. And I'm not sure that we're so different, he and I. <clears throat> um, I'm going to correct or I'm going to add to a few things that he just said. But uh, first off, I, I do want to say that my approach has always been that I, I, I say to liberals that we have to have the same approach to guns that I tell conservatives they have to have with illegal immigration, where uh, they say, well, they shouldn't be here. Well, okay, well, they are here. 
there the, the the statistics go from 9 million to i think up to 14 and 15 million undocumented workers in this country i say you have to start from here Th these people are here what do we do from here i don't want to hear some fantasy where they shouldn't be here they should all leave that doesn't work and the same thing goes for guns uh you're not going to get rid of all the guns you could say that people shouldn't have them, but they do have them. And so you have to start building a common sense approach, starting from reality, from where we are now. And that includes ARs and assault rifles. Um, two quick things I want to touch on that David just said. Uh, you were talking about the violence in blue states. But the fact of the matter is, statistically speaking, blue states with uh, more gun control actually have less gun violence. Uh your favorite talking point, not yours, Javier, um, <laughs> but any conservatives, Chicago, Chicago, a couple quick facts about Chicago. Number one, uh, if you live on the southern outskirts of Chicago, your local gas station is Indian in Indiana. That is how close Indiana is with their incredibly loose gun laws. And we all know that these borders around cities are imaginary. They don't actually, you, 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 there's no physical border. It's just an imaginary line on a map that you don't actually drive through. So if your local gas station is in Indiana, tell me how hard it would be to go get a gun in Chicago from Indiana. That said, Chicago, your favorite example, number 28 on the list of most gun violence in American cities. Not even close. Not even close. Uh, that said, so that shows that even... In a crazy country like this, where these invisible lines between states and municipalities, even with that, gun control in the blue states does have an effect on gun violence in those states. David mentioned the Second Amendment real quickly, <clears throat> and he says, well, it's the guns are very different than they were at the time, but the country was very different at the time. When it says a well-regulated militia, by the way, is something that I've never heard a right-winger say it. They always start with the shall not be infringed part. For some reason, they always skip that a well-regulated militia being necessary for the security of a free state part. Well, that's because we didn't have a standing army. We all know that. That militia wasn't a militia like you have in Michigan going to cut, kidnap the governor or whatever it is. We're talking about an actual um, militia that would be mustered in the case of a threat against the United States and of America. And it says well-regulated. Well-regulated. What does that mean? Yeah. regulations absolutely and therefore in addition to uh, the fact that we had no standing army the actual debate at the constitutional convention which we still have the notes on when they were doing the uh the bill of rights i guess that wasn't at the constitutional convention but that said when they were doing the bill of rights the reason that we have to use the word state is the southern states were very worried that the federal task force was going to be appointed and their slave patrols would be out. So they didn't say a well-regulated militia is a militia is necessary for the security of a free country. They had to change the words to state in order to make sure that the southern states felt protected. And what they wanted to protect was their slave patrols. They didn't want northerners controlling those slave patrols. So that's the real history of the Second Amendment when you guys start okay, uh, jumping Michael, up and down, Michael. screaming and yelling about shall not be infringed. <laughs> Let, let's, all right, let's focus... On the gun control aspect, because like you said, uh, there are already there are four hundred million, about four hundred million firearms in Absolutely. this country currently, right? Um, now, like I said, I'm not. We could do a debate, but I'm not interested in a debate right now because, like I said, we have mass shootings, we have gun violence in America, right? And I'm pro Second Amendment. I am pro gun, but what I'm trying to do is get past of this back and forth, left and right, just constant never-ending bickering, right? So I want to propose something and see how you respond to it, okay? What do you do about the fact that most violent crimes in America when it comes to gun violence is committed by handguns? A lot of times we hear people say, well, we should ban assault rifles or AR-15s. And a lot of times we get in disputes about what an assault rifle actually is or what an AR-15 was meant for. But how do you respond to somebody that says, if you take the AR-15 or what you consider to be assault rifles, isn't it only natural that the next thing is a handguns and pistols and things of that sort? Because they are a majority of the firearms used in the commission of a, viol a gun crime. Uh, well, for one, I don't want to take anyone's guns uh, no. necessarily, for one. Uh, well, David kind of hit on it right there. And the, and the analogy that uh, he very rightly said uh, with cars works exactly right. 
It works exactly right. In order to drive a car, you have to go demonstrate to an agent of the state that you know how to operate a vehicle because it could be dangerous. You are then licensed. Now, let's say that were a gun, and you have to go get a license from the state, and you have to illustrate that you know how to use it. I was just saying today that wouldn't one of the prerequis prerequisites to being a good guy with a gun be that you actually know how to use it? Otherwise, you're not really a good guy, are you? If you go into a situation with a gun and you have good intentions and you're firing wildly in every direction, you're not helping. You're not a good guy. So secondly, I think that, that, that in the, the, the person that's going to be in charge of overseeing, like the DMV driving test instructor, the gun driving test instructor, he is our first line of defense against the mentally unstable young men, more often than not, almost entirely, that do these mass shootings. He, we are putting an agent in the state who's trained to spot what obviously gun shop owners either can't spot or refuse to spot because they like the sales. Um, so that's your first step the licensing of the handguns. Second is the registration of the handguns. It's ridiculous. David said cars. If I buy a car, I have to register it with the state. And if I sell a car, I don't just sell it and the state says, hey, where's, where's the car? I don't know. I sold it to a guy. <laughs> no, dude, you have to notify the state where it went. Furthermore, with cars, we have insurance. That's a different debate altogether. Let's just start with licensing and registration. All right, and so you grandfather it in on every weapon. So let's, um, I, I know, let's take that approach. So okay, let, I just... Can, can I say something right. about that real quick, Javier? Yeah. Javier. Um, <laughs> I know the pushback that we're going to get on this idea of treating it like a car or a driver's license. Driving is a privilege. Gun is a right. Right? Wrong. And, well, no, that's, that's what it's supposed to be. There's limitations on all of our rights. Of course there is, and I, I'll get into that. But um, you call me wrong again. I'm taking your microphone. No, I... <laughs> I it's, it's, it's this idea that... You know, just like voting is a right, but if you add a tax to it or you say you have to be licensed to vote or you have to show an ID or you have to do, it's like considered a poll tax, right? Now, yeah, it's a right, but you have to meet requirements. So the whole pushback from the right is if you add anything to my rights, you're taking my rights away. And so well, that, that's why they seem to get so uptight. David, I, I, I was hoping to be this voice and asking those questions and bringing up those uh, because I think the way most conservatives or people who are pro to a would would see it as okay well what about voting people say that you uh what about all of the restrictions and limitations that should be around voting which you have the right to vote yet if we, if if you don't want all of these restrictions around the requirements to vote but yet we want to put restrictions around the second amendment people would see that as okay well why are you for regulations and restrictions in one area versus the other area which are both rights yeah because voting because voting doesn't kill children in schools and well some would argue voting, voting actually determines who represents us that has much more dire negative negative consequences i don't know that it could be more dire than children dying in in elementary schools and what what i would say to this is um this is going to be shocking to many conservatives it might make them roll their eyes and stop watching this but at what point at what point is the answer because it's my right no longer good enough like if i were to say to you um I think you should have to pass a test uh, demonstrating you can use a handgun before you buy it. You can't have any more than two handguns and you need to limit no more than 10 bullets loaded in the gun or it's considered illegal. And you go, but it's my right to have 15 rounds, but it's my right to have an extended magazine. It's my right. It's my right. It's my right. And at what point do I just get to say, how about I don't give a shit about your rights as much as I used to? How about what? how about That's fair. at what That's... point at what point does because mom said I could not matter anymore? If if you're babysitting your little sister and she says I want to eat cookies, mom said I could have three cookies, and you go, I know, mom said you could have three cookies. You ate one, and then ants literally crawled in the cookies. So. If I give you the cookies that you were guaranteed by mom's constitution before she left, 
uh, you're you're gonna potentially really hurt yourself. And she's just stomping on the ground, going, "But I get two more cookies." Yeah, I know that's what mom said, but there's a more responsible thing to address here because things have changed, and those cookies are a hell of a lot more dangerous than they were when mom left. And we can't go get mom anymore, so we have to make decisions now for the safety of everybody. So I don't think my right to own a gun is anywhere close to what it used to be when we were given that right. There's ants all over our goddamn cookies, and people just want to keep telling us what mom said they could have. And I just don't care as much anymore. You willingly give up your right to carry guns all the time. You, you give up your rights to carry guns to go pick your kid up from school. You willingly give up your right to carry guns to get on an airplane or some public transportation. You constantly give up your rights in order to enjoy certain privileges. So clearly, there's something different about these weapons than it used to be when the laws were put in place. All right. Okay. So this is what I'll say. And, and what I'm trying to do is flush out exactly like the thought process here, right? Um. Now, earlier you said something about, like, you have to have a license to, to drive a car. You have to have a license. All right. So what do you say to the objection that, or what about the the elderly lady that lives in a very poor neighborhood who, who works two jobs or she lives in a gang-infested neighborhood or just a woman in a domestic violence situation who's who needs a weapon for protection immediately because this guy is stalking her or trying to harm her in some way, and she's went to the cops and... They can't necessarily do anything because they don't have the proof or evidence or whatever the case may be. They put a restraining order out on him. What do you say to people who are in situations where they can't necessarily go through all of those steps in order to protect themselves in in situations? Yeah, I would would say before you answer, because I want to give you this one. Statistically, if you are worried about your own safety, and these are statistics, I know they don't feel good, but statistically, you go buy a gun to protect yourself you are far more likely to hurt yourself or some innocent person with that gun than you are to successfully defend yourself using that gun. 38 times more likely. That's a lot. Okay. Uh, That's a lot. Well, all right. <laughs> you, uh, it's a fantasy. And you guys live in the world of fantasy, and I, I hate to say that, but every time you argue with a right winger about these points, um, you get these amazing, uh, and I, this is something I hope to get into, which is smart guns and uh, micro stamping and a few things that you guys stand in the way of as well. But when it comes to smart guns and you say, okay, what's wrong with a gun where <clears throat> only you can fire it? You bought it, you're licensed for it, and only you can fire it. And you get these, what if I'm fighting a bad guy, rolling around on the ground with him in my house and my gun comes out and my wife picks it up, now she can't fire it. It's like, dude, 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 we're, we're talking about real life here. You know that. But you, what you really wanted, happened was a guy walked into a school in Texas and murdered children. Well, first. That really happened. What you just said is fantasy. Well, first, a guy who was in the real world. You would admit, both well. of you would admit that there are millions of cases every year where people use guns in self-defense. Against who? Yes, people but, with guns. Yes, but the, the percentage is much, much smaller from misfires, suicides, and mass shootings. It's it's minuscule. I wouldn't say millions in the United States. And sometimes they're firing and the bullets fly everywhere and the person runs away. Sure, that's happened. There's videos of that happening. But statistically speaking. It, it, you are much more likely to hurt yourself, go into a fit of rage, commit suicide when you're super depressed or angry about something, or shoot, shoot, your balls off. shoot somebody accidentally, shoot through your own leg, your own foot, whatever. It, it, that's so much statistically higher than the fantasy of someone kicking in your door, you rolling out of bed like Rambo and saving the day. It just doesn't happen the way people think it does. But what does happen is the violence in the streets, the criminals with guns. Again, the gun lobby is a big part of the problem, and I feel like maybe we're getting off the rails and talking about too many things at once, so I'm going to let Javier ask a few more pointed questions, but I would love to get to the gun lobby and the motivations that that drive the Republican Congress. But I have one more point on this topic, just for Javier. So let's say you go, okay, well, I don't want to keep my gun in a safe because I want to be able to roll out of bed and shoot somebody. Okay, so you... Let's say you just lay it on the nightstand. A lot of people do, or they have a shotgun propped up by the bed. 
in most states, if you have a child in the house, that's a class B misdemeanor. You're breaking the law by allowing access to that gun. You just can't. And then every time you leave the house, you're just, you're going to lock the gun up. And then every time you come home, you're going to pull the gun back out. People forget things get laid out. When I was about 16 years old, a kid, a 11 or 12 year old kid right down the street, I found one of his dad's gun guns that he forgot to lock up. The kid put it in his mouth to play a prank on other kids. And he, he killed himself in front of these two other 11 year olds. And it was so weird. The whole neighborhood was affected by it. My daughter, uh, did online private charter school, but the high school she would have went to would have been, uh, it was called Saugus where one of the, where one of the mass shootings happened and, and two people died. She would have been at that school had she not been in an online private charter school. I just, I, the way people think things are going to happen are just not reality. And this is something else shocking to a lot of people. When I went through my training to have a concealed carry permit, they do make, it was only 16 hours, but they make you go th sit through these videos and these testimonies of people who legally used their gun to defend themselves. And it still literally ruined their lives. And I mean, person breaks in, you pull your gun out, they start running, but they've got some of your property, they run to your backyard, they're hopping the fence, you fire, they die on the other side of the, of the thing. Turns out they dropped your property on your porch, you didn't see it. Here's to the great American settlers. The millions of you who settled for unsatisfying jobs because they pay the bills. Of course, there is something else you could do if you got something to say. Start a podcast with Spreaker from iHeart and unleash your creative freedom. Maybe even earn enough money to one day tell your old boss, Hey, I'm no settler. I'm an explorer. Spreaker.com. S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. Hustle on over today. Is it acceptable to go to Mickey D's just for a drink? <laughs> of course it is. But good luck leaving with just a drink. It's more than a drink. It's a Mickey D's drink. Experience all the creamy goodness that is a McCafe iced coffee. Try flavors like caramel, French vanilla, and sugar-free French vanilla. Now, get any size for only $1.69. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer. Murder. So now you're in court, $300,000 of your life savings just to defend yourself to prove you didn't actually t intend on murdering someone. And sure, the, 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 you, you eventually win, right? You eventually win. You don't go to prison. But that person's dead. Turns out they were a drug addict and didn't know where they were, whatever. Um, you don't go to prison, but your savings is gone you've been arrested, you've got this on your record, now you got to fight to get it expunged, you can't get a job anywhere else. It's just, there's so much negativity even when it does play out correctly. And in most, like, the cops don't show up and high-five you and say, awesome job killing the bad guy. You have to be arrested when someone dies. And someone, then you and then you have to fight for your life to prove it was a it was a justifiable homicide. And sometimes some people you would argue that that is more so a flaw in how gun owners are treated. If a person breaks into your house and you should have every legal right to 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 shoot that person. Now, if, now, I get I get your point. I'm not saying that I disagree with the, the, all the legal processes. I'm just trying to bring up every objection so that you can properly address it. I understand. Right? So that they can hear. I want my viewers to hear exactly yeah, how you see these things. Sure. Yeah. If they're in your house, yeah. But what if the person runs out of your house? And what if on the way out, they, they say, I'm going to come back and kill you? And then, they, and then they're in your backyard. Or they run out your front yard. I went to high school with a guy named Billy who got in trouble all the time. He was a petty criminal. I got into my mid-20s and heard this story about how he died. He broke into a guy's house. The guy had a gun. He fired at him. Billy ran. It was two guys, Billy and another guy. They ran out. One ran out the front, one ran out the back. The guy that ran out the front made it down the street. Billy ran out the back, hopped the fence, ran up the side of the guy's house. The getaway car was this way, so he literally, to his right, so he had to cross in front of the guy's house in order to get away. So he crossed the street and was running a, uh, down the sidewalk of, uh, of the, of the cross the street neighbor. And the guy shot Billy from across the street and killed him. And the guy went to prison for murder. 
was Billy a current threat? No. But did Billy break into his house? Sure. But he didn't kill him while he was in his house. So how do we deal with that? Should the guy get off scot-free because he chased Billy out the front and shot him in the head? I, I don't I don't think so. I don't think he should be off scot-free. Are they both innocent? Of course not. Billy was wrong for what he did. I just I, I think that we're too lax with it. We're way too lax. And 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 at the end of the day, Javier. We could argue till we're blue in the face about this back and forth, back and forth. Like you said, there's all this talking past each other. And I, my, I bring up a point, Michael goes, and I'll add this. And you go, well, technically this. The three of us aren't going to solve this right here today. But the reality is, with any other issue in the world, you take a step back and go, who's doing it right? Who's doing it wrong? If you have surgery in North Carolina, and 80% of the people die during surgery, but in California, it's a 97% survival rate. The doctors get together and go, what's California doing right? What's North Carolina doing wrong? And we learn from each other, right? We watch statistics okay. and we learn from each other. You can pull up any statistic on mass shootings and gun violence, and the United States is ridiculously ahead over and over and over, no matter how you slice it. We used to be considered one of the greatest nations in the world, and we are an absolute embarrassment. Absolute embarrassment. Every other modern country in the world has figured out that people can't handle an open-ended rights to guns. Guns are more powerful than people are intelligent, and the shit is going <laughs> to go sideways, and the rest of the world has figured this out, but America's standing here screaming about, mom said I could have three cookies, while people are dying every single day in this country. It's time to wake up, Take a look at the world around us and realize we are becoming the laughing stock of the world. People would be laughing if it wasn't so absolutely devastatingly disgusting that we let people die over and over and over and over because my right. It's beyond absurd, man. Have, are are y'all familiar with the, the, the gun policies in Israel? No. No. Okay, uh, I, I just bring this up because Israel is like, like a, a very pro gun. Like they have like a right. lot of people. Like everybody's armed in Israel. Like uh, I hear stories of people going into the bar or whatever, and it's like armed guards, like guys just standing around with like guns. Like Israel is very, very pro gun, but they have like uh, very little gun violence when it comes to Israel. Um, and some people attribute that to Israel has a very um, high rate, I guess, of military um, one hundred participation. You have to yeah. you have to serve, except for there's yeah. certain you know what that means? groups who get exemptions, but everyone serves. You know what everyone that means? gets trained. Everyone is trained and everyone is passing psyche vows. Yeah. Same with yeah. uh I believe Switzerland, same deal. There are countries with equal gun ownership, if not more gun ownership than America that don't have this problem, Javier. And yeah, Israel And that's what I'm trying to uh, understand. Like we we could let's let's say that we have gun control as one of the tools in the arsenal. Is there any other aspect that you think that we can implement or focus on that may also, because like you said, we have 400 million guns in America. And even if tomorrow they decided that, no, we're not making any more guns. Uh, we're going to try to buy back guns, even though realistically, a lot of people aren't probably going to turn in their guns, right? We're still going to have to deal with the fact that there is a potential for people to get their hands on guns and commit mass violence. So is there any other well, let's get to the let's get to those, yeah. and those are great points, Javier. First off, I'd like to see if we can put this constitutional right thing to bed, because it is to bed. It's 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 a nonsense point. My right for one, Second Amendment. When you read it, well regulated militia. But let's get beyond that. Freedom of speech. Right wingers seem to crow about that quite often, uh, as if they have some ownership over it that the left wingers don't have. But that said. Limitations on it. We have limitations on free speech. You cannot, quote unquote, uh, the famous example is yell fire in a movie house. But there's a lot of things you can't yell and say. In fact, I can't slander David Smalley. That's illegal. I can't go out and say untrue well, things about hold him. Hold on, I mean, it's that's not illegal. I mean, it would be a yeah. civil issue. Okay, okay. Yeah. you can't yell yeah. fire in a movie well, let's, theater. Let's also be voting. fair. I know we spoke there's about restrictions this a on bit. I'm going to let you finish, Michael. I'm going to let you finish. Uh, yeah. But I would argue that it's not that guns aren't regulated. It's that we want more regulations. There are already certain things in place surrounding guns. We just 
I, we would argue that some people want more than what we currently have, right? Yes. Uh, because like I could use the same example with cars, for example, like y'all bought up earlier. You could say, well, we have seat belts, we have to have a license, but yet more people are killed in car accidents every year than by gun. They're violence. not designed but, as killing machines. They're not designed killing machines, but it's still costing a lot of lives. And some people could make the argument, well, we need more car regulations in order to save more lives. So the, the question isn't, should we have regulations around a certain right? It's how much regulations. Well, we do, right? though. We do. We add traffic laws every single year. There's constantly... The, the stuff that my daughter had to take for driver's ed was different from what I took as driver's ed. Even something as simple as how they hold the steering wheel when they turn. They no longer do 10 and 2 and crossing over turn like this. They hold at 3 and 9 and they shuffle the wheel like this to turn because that's how cops were trained to drive in emergency situations because when they if they're like this and they get hit, it's going gonna, it's gonna to mess up their arms whenever the... Um, uh, airbag deploys. So, of course, there, and that's just one tiny example that happened between my license and my daughter's license. And there are constantly uh, different penalties put into place and different city codes and different, you know, subsection A or B or whatever. I agree. So, okay, I agree so with it, you. I think that and it's all written times... in blood and it's all in the mat in the name of safety. But when we try to do that with guns, people call it a slippery slope argument and say, "Well, what's next? What's next? What's next?" Well, what's next what, is maybe what, people won't be dying at elementary school. Maybe that's That's what's why next. I'm bringing it up because I think that what most people are going to hear is cuz I I know the argument, right? There are already regulations on guns. There are already certain guns you can't get. There are background check, federal background checks that you got to go to when you go buy a firearm from a federal licensed dealer. There are certain states that don't allow, you know, certain okay. capacity around. People are going to make the argument that there is regulation and then your counter argument is, well, we need more regulations in order to make it safer, right? But sometimes people think that liberals are saying that guns are not regulated. And people get the impression that, no, you just want more regulations than we're comfortable with. And I think that's where the disagreement goes. But I just wanted to point that out because uh, Michael was making the point that, well, there's regulations on free speech and stuff like that. And I do think that there is regulations on guns. It's just you would like to see more. Okay, right? so we're in agreement that regulations yeah. on gun is guns are, exist, are, yeah. exi not, but uh, that they're acceptable, obviously. So now it's just a now that we know we can regulate guns, the the question just becomes where does the line go? You know what yes. I'm saying? Yeah. And let's, if I may, just real quickly, because the Second Amendment is is uh, it's a really interesting topic. The fact of the matter is, all the Supreme Courts that have existed in this country's history that were closer to the Founding Fathers said that the Second Amendment did not give the individual a right to bear arms. In fact, it was the Heller decision, uh, D.C. versus Heller, that was 2006. That was after George W. Bush and the Federalist Society had started stacking the Supreme Court with the conservative judges that they wanted in order to get their way. 2006 was the first time the Supreme Court said the Second Amendment guarantees an individual's right to bear arms. Every Supreme Court before that, that were very much closer in time to the Founding Fathers and understood their intention better, perhaps, said it does not give an individual the right to bear arms. So would you both, if you had to choose, like, would you rather live in a country where you have the right to bear arms or would you rather live in a country where you don't have the right? You know what? Just a hypothetical. I'm not saying yeah, that no, you that's have to a good, it's, like, it's a good question. It's a good question. And me being a Texas boy, uh, I would have answered this question the same my entire life until probably 10 or 11 months ago. As of now, I think I would rather live in a country where I did not have a right to bear arms. I think I would, because the if I can't get it, I know it's harder for everyone else to get it. And it's not to say they can't, but it's harder. Um, so I would, it, it, it's, a, it's a personal sacrifice that I would be willing to make. Um, I also, even though I feel like I would be safe with a gun, I know that statistically I'm not. Statistically, things aren't going to happen you know, when it's four o'clock in the afternoon, I just cleaned the gun, I reloaded it, put the safety on, and then the bad guy kicks in my door while I'm standing in my living room. I take the safety off and boom, boom, I'm Rambo. I know that's not going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen at 3.30 in the morning when my dog's barking. I get up and go, shut up, shut up, shut up. And then someone's got their hand around my throat and I'm scrambling for what? 
the combination to my gun safe. I mean, statistically, I know it's not going to happen the way I always thought it would when I was uh, 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 this devoted gun owner. So I would rather now live in a, in a, in a country where we did not have the right to bear arms because when I look around the world as to who's doing it right and who is not having this level of gun deaths, it's, it's people who, who have more laws, uh, uh, fewer guns or more regulations around those guns and more forced training around those guns. And I, I don't think we're at a point where we can force the training without starting a goddamn civil war. That's what it seems like. So, um, if I could pick, I would rather live in a, in, in a country that did not, that did not provide the right to bear arms. What am I, what am I going to protect myself from? If, if the cops, if the cops wanted to kick in my door and you've seen this on the news multiple times just in the last couple of months, if the cops kick in my door, I'm better off getting video of what they're doing than I am shooting at them. If I shoot at cops who are illegal, illegally entering my door, I will die. I will most certainly die or at the very least go to prison. And even if I can prove somehow that they unlawfully entered my home, I'm still shooting a law enforcement officer, which is going to be damn near impossible to get out of that, especially if those officers die. So if you, sh if you have 40 guns and an army tank and... Uh, they're just going to show up with six Black Hawk helicopters. Like you're never well, going to, you're never going to out question, arm, baby. you're never going to out arm the government. So what this if, idea what that if you were, uh, 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 what if you were a female who lived alone and let's just say somebody broke into your house to try to overpower you and take advantage of you. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there are women in this country who feel a lot safer knowing that they can train and, learn how to use a firearm in self-defense in case a, a bigger, stronger attacker is tries to take advantage of them? Yes. But you asked if they would feel safer. Yes. Statistically, are they safer? No. Statistically, they are safer with pepper spray, tasers, and things like that that will pause the person so that they can get away. Their strength is in getting away and notifying someone else, not being in a Wild West gun battle with a potential rapist. That does not typically end well for the victim. Okay, Michael, what, what do you say? Would you rather live in a country without the right to bear arms or would you prefer to live in a country that does have the right to bear arms? It's tough even if it, even ever... if it includes your regulations and things of that sort. Sure, yeah, I hear you. I mean, it's a tough one, man. I, I again, I find the arguments that the right to bear arms has something to do with a tyrannical government to be so laughable and stupid that I can't even fathom what they're talking about. And then it's coming from a person whose version of a tyrannical government is a government that wants to give everyone health care. That's what they want to pick up their arms to fight against. No way. I mean, I, I, I am all for reasonable gun regulations in this country. But and if I would you be could happy pick. with it, but if I had to pick, I, yeah, I mean, there are no good guys with guns, in my opinion. Not that they, they there aren't good guys with guns. The scenario that only a good guy with a gun can stop a bad guy with a gun, I think that's that, and, that's dead. And let's, that's and, stupid. And can I it just, doesn't no, happen. I, another I, person I wanna, in the picture. I want to hone in on that one. Another Why person. Do you think it's dead? All right, let me just say that an, yeah. we've seen time and time again that adding another unidentified person into the scenario, firing a gun as the police show up, doesn't help anybody. It hurts. There was a guy when Gabby Giffords was shot in the head in Arizona. A guy heard gunshots and came rushing out with his gun and pointed it at an innocent person who was about to pull the trigger. And people jumped on him, too, and was like, no, that's not the shooter. He almost wasted an innocent person. It's confusion. You're not. These people are not trained to be in this situation. The best advice when gunfire is being you know, dispersed is to run for everybody, even the dude with his piece that's like, oh, I'm going to get him. You are not helping the situation. More likely than not. And statistically, I mean, how many mass shootings have we had? You guys, you'd think the good guy with a gun would have uh, uh, 
come through at least once. And there's a video of a, of a there's a, there's a YouTube channel where a guy shows a bunch of self defense stuff that people are constantly with guns defending themselves, and every time he he shows what they did, and he lists all the things they did wrong. He's like, this person didn't do this right. They could have gone this way, could have gone that way. This could have been a huge mistake. And so even the people that occasionally do successfully defend themselves, not only are they in the minority, statistically speaking, but even when they do it right, they do it dangerously and they make a ton of mistakes that could, without a little bit of luck, ended up with someone else dying or themselves dying or something else. It's, it's, we're just not... We're just not trained and, and of the right mindset to do this, man. We're, we're, we just can't handle this responsibility, I don't think. Okay. All right. So um, just to let everybody know who's in the conversation, um, we will you will be able to ask questions. Super chats get precedent. So if you want to make sure your question get asked, the uh, super chat will definitely help. And um, we're going to talk a little bit more, and then we're going to take some questions. So y'all go ahead and queue up y'all questions if y'all want to ask them anything. So when okay. what, what Michael was saying, I wanted to chime in on it, but I want to let you say what you wanted to say, and then I'll, I'll, I'll Well, respond. I don't want you to lose the thought, though. No, um, no, you go ahead. You go ahead. Okay. Um. So now I'm trying to get into the mindset of, like, I know what people watching will say. Okay, well, they're fine living in a country where we don't have the right to bear arms at all, right? And- what they're assuming is, okay, let's say they do start to take certain guns off the streets or start saying you can't have certain types of weapons. Where do you stop? And people want to know exactly, is there a limit? Is there a place where people on the left are willing to say, okay, that's too far? Because if the right and the left have to work on these issues together, somebody's going to have to agree on how far is too far and where we can meet each other somewhere and say, all right, you can't have these things, but this is as far as we're willing to go. Yeah, so I would be okay with uh, buying shotguns. I'd be okay with people having shotguns for home self-defense. Um, but, you know, most shotguns are going to limit to, you know, from three to seven shells, you know, depending on which, which shotgun you have. And... It's, it's very difficult to conceal a shotgun. So uh, I, I think it would be safe to say it is almost entirely impossible to walk into a school and, and kill 21 people with a shotgun. I think, um, it, you know, the amount of times you would have to reload in order for that to happen, I think. And then a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the shot, especially from birdshot or even buckshot, will, will tend to spread out a lot. So people can get hit by bits and pieces of it, but it doesn't necessarily... You have to be really focused and aiming directly on an individual in close proximity in order to ensure a kill shot with one shot. So it's it's harder, right? It's not just fire, 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 fire. And then, you know, of course, like he did, that, that situation, he was locked in a room with those kids for about an hour and those absolute cowards of cops stood out there and listened to the gunshots and stopped people from going in. And I've never been more enraged by law enforcement than something like that or watching the George Floyd video. That shit does the same thing. It just makes my blood boil. Um, and that, that's a different issue, so I won't, I won't get into that now. But you know, just this idea that it used to be dangerous to be a cop and now I st see them hiding behind trees and yelling commands or shooting a 12-year-old uh, within two seconds of showing up on a site. I just, I just find so many of them to be uh, disgusting cowards now that it's hard to look upon that job with respect. Let me ask you a question since you bring but, that up real quick. Yeah. Because uh, you know people are going to say, well, if we can't rely on the cops to protect us, who will protect us? If you if, if we can't protect ourselves and the cops can't protect us, well, what is the alternative? Well, uh, in this situation, um, that 18-year-old who was clearly mentally disturbed went online and bought that gun legally. Uh, so what regulation was there to stop him? What that that's what we should have relied on. We should have relied on the the federal government that we pay our taxes to to keep us safe to to regulate said militia. Right? Where is the regulate part of that? Um, if there were, if he had to have a waiting period and a psych eval, and you couldn't just buy a gun online, maybe that should be illegal. Um, there are several modern countries where you're not allowed to own a handgun. 
and you can own shotguns and you have to get special approval for certain rifles and you have to prove that you have a hunting license in order to buy that rifle and assault rifles are banned because you don't need to kill 13 deer within four seconds. So, uh, yeah, you can have a shotgun for home defense no uh, handguns are allowed and you don't get to buy assault rifles. And then you go through a waiting process. So, uh, and a psyche valve and, and forced training. You have to have a license in order to train. Look at, at what Canada has in place right now. They're trying to do even more. But what Canada has in place right now is pretty damn good. You have to, you have to obtain a license in order to buy these things. I think, I think it should be something along those lines. And that's what I would be fine with. I would no longer feel like an embarrassment if we put that kind of regulation in and the people could still have their guns, but the days of you having 14 AR 15s to show off to your buddies should be over. You should not be allowed to do that. Michael, you want to chime in? I, I just, but before we head off to questions, um, I wanted to just hit a point that you didn't make, but, uh, most certainly gets made, uh, very often, which is gun laws only affect the law abiding gun owners because criminals don't follow laws. Now, obviously, I'm sure you know, you've just made an argument against laws. But let's look at that uh, just beneath the surface. Let's take cars again. So the law is what makes it so you can differentiate the legal gun owner from the illegal gun owner. Let's say you have a car, no license, no registration. You're driving down the street and you get pulled over. How does the cop determine that you have that you shouldn't be in that car because you have no license and no registration. That car's coming off the street and you are either getting an Uber or getting a buddy to come get you, or you might even be going to jail, depending. Well, the same goes for guns. When you say that criminals won't obey the laws, that's the point. The cop pulls you over and you have a gun in your car. You pull out your license and your registration. He says, drive on. You pull over, the criminal pulls over. He's got no license and no registration. That gun's coming off the street. So it is quite literally the point that criminals won't obey the laws and that the law abiding will. That helps us. That's and, a good thing. And the thought that I had in my head that I wanted to say about that, when Michael said there is no good guy with a gun, and then he clarified what he was talking about, this, I, this, this black or white thinking that it's either good guys and bad guys is also not realistic. We all know people that we once considered good guys who now we know are bad guys. Every one of us in our personal lives trusted somebody with something and now regret trusting that person or used to be friends with someone and thought, one day I'm going to name my kid after this guy. And then after being stabbed in the back by something he or she did, you're like, I, I cannot believe I put so much trust into that person. I, I just... Mama is treating me to breakfast. Yep. Let me see your phone. Huh? Look here. I download this McDonald's app because when you buy any bagel sandwich like the steak, egg, and cheese bagel, you get one free. Wait, you just bought that on my phone. That's right. Now that you got McDonald's money, you could treat mama. <laughs> okay, ma. You got it. Valid for product of equal or lesser value. Valid through 10 22 at participating McDonald's. Valid one time per day. App download and registration required. At Wendy's, we make breakfast better. Like with our breakfast Baconator. Better from top to bottom bun. Savory sausage patty? Better. Crispy oven baked bacon? Better. Fresh cracked egg? Better. The breakfast Baconator might just be the greatest breakfast sandwich of all time. So you can keep settling for not better, or you can get a better breakfast from Wendy's. Tough choice. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's Better Breakfast. At participating U.S. Wendy's during breakfast hours. This idea that once I'm a good guy, I get to have a gun for life is absurd. We, we, we know that almost every single time when there is a shooting, people go, I didn't expect him to do that. Or I never saw that coming. Or he was just really quiet and weird. I didn't expect that to happen. Or you yourself are a very good person. And then you go through a fit of rage or you have a traumatic event happen, or you have something that snaps in you. You have a momentary lapse in judgment, but because you have access to a gun, you use that. And now that has dire consequences on multiple families. And then you're in prison three years later, weeping, going, I can't believe that was me. It feels like it was someone else. There is no such thing as a good guy with a gun. There are people who were sometimes good and people who were sometimes bad. And you know what? 
if you're a good guy and you happen to have a gun, nobody gets hurt. But if you have a gun and you turn into a bad guy, even for a short amount of time, if you have a gun, the consequences are devastating. So you having a gun, even if you're a good guy, isn't okay with me because what if you're not a good guy tomorrow? What if something happens, right? That's the like issue Lex we're Luther dealing with. with Superman. Lex Luthor felt that way with Superman. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, so I got some questions coming in. Um, like I said, Super Chats come first. Uh, so uh, David Smalley and Michael Regilio, you're both grown. Uh, y'all try to keep it as clean as possible. I know that some of y'all probably disagree, but I got thick let's... skin. You you read you read yeah. those questions word for word, Javier. You don't Man. clean this up on my account. Like you you know how many hecklers have screamed obscenities at us? You yeah, can't... but I, I, I'm trying to create a, a productive conversation. Okay, okay. It, we need to have a productive conversation sure. okay. because yeah. Uh, so first one up is. Uh, I can't pronounce this name properly. Jay Kermit Trill. Tri- oh, it's Jay Kermit Riley. Jay Kermit Riley. I'm sorry. You must have changed your name. It looked like it was different at one point. Well, I, I hold on, hold for, on. Let him ask the question. Okay. <laughs> it is clear you do not know much about guns. What gives you the authority to restrict those who do? Bitch, you don't know me. No, um, <laughs> I know plenty about guns. What are you talking? Like I li- like this. That's that's just the that's just a dumbass attack on my character. Like. I, maybe they weren't here when I explained that I was raised around guns and I shot guns and I took my kids to the gun range and I had a concealed carry permit in the state of Texas. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what this person's even talking about. This is a dipshit, stupid ass question. Okay. Uh, so the, um, Kermit dipshit, listen, so, uh, what gives me the authority to restrict guns that I say I had the authority, this entire question is a strong, this is the type of question that makes the discussion not productive. And the reason is because it's just insulting. It's assuming knowledge that I do have, but you're saying that I don't, you're pretending to know me when you don't know me. And you're saying that I claim to have authority. I never claim to have Javier has been asking about what we should do so i'm giving my opinion of what we should do as a guest on javier's show i've never claimed to have direct authority over somebody else so get out of here with your dumbass question all right thanks for the super chat hold on i'm gonna jump in i have a i i I too would like to respond to that because uh and i think i'm gonna be it's gonna be with a little less teeth I'm just I'm just playing the way Kermit's I know, playing. Kermit's I just playing. Kermit's want to play rough. I'll play rough. I'm not offended. I but just want to poke back. If uh, Kermit had listened to what I said at the beginning uh, about my stance, is actually from my point of view, I don't want to restrict those who know about guns. But how do I know you know about guns? This gets back to the licensing. You yeah. got to go to an instructor, a federally or state uh, assigned instructor who's going to run you through the paces and you're going to take courses just like with a driver's license and you're going to study and you're going to watch the movies and you're going to take the tests and then you're going to go out to the shooting range and they're going to assess you and they're going to give you a psych evaluation and when you pa- and when you pass all that and you prove that you do know about guns I'm probably not going to be the guy that wants to restrict your guns same all right next question uh now, how are you, how are you? So, uh, question, how would you go about regulating militias based on Second Amendment rights? I mean, again, we'll start with the fact that when they said militia in the Second Amendment, they were not talking about you and your friends in the woods of Minnesota or wherever it is. You know, they I were mean, talking about an army willing to defend the nation. Yeah, uh, an army that musters on command right. uh, in order to defend the nation because we didn't have a standing we're talking army. About, they were talking about Israel. They were talking yeah. about what Israel is. Everybody in, the, in, in Israel is that military we were talking about because if some shit goes down, we need to all be able to fight. Just like in Ukraine, you need to be able to stick around and fight. That's what it should be. It's, it's not that you and your buddies get to go out to the woods and all buy AR-15s to fight against our government. In fact, some guys were just caught doing that and all got arrested. There, you, you don't have the right to make an army against the United States. That's not what your rights are. You just don't have that. So, yeah. so regulating, I don't know. I, I, but I mean, it's very interesting. It's, it's a misunderstood concept, I think. And I think it's a very interesting question that you asked it, you framed it in, uh, in the light of the Second Amendment. And then you said, how would you go about regulating militias? The first line of the Second Amendment is about regulating militias. So, I mean, how would I go about it? Well, I'm not a policymaker. I've, I've done some reading, and obviously we've discussed what our ideas are. But uh, the, the Second Amendment states that your militia should be well-regulated. So that's 
that's that's I, I have an idea. Father's talking. How would I regulate psyche valves, proper training, make sure people know how to, you know, uh, clear uh, around when it's stuck so that it doesn't misfire. Um, make sure people know how to load and unload without um, having ac- accidental uh, misfires. I, you, you, you make sh- you common sense. You know, you, you make sure people are mentally well enough and trained well enough to not or to reduce accidents and to avoid or at the very least mitigate um, insidious behavior. Those are the types of regulations I would want. It's not that I don't want them to have the gun. It's that, like Michael is saying, I want you to prove you know what the hell you're doing and that you can be safe with it. And right now, you can just walk into a damn gun show and leave with an AR-15, and you just own it. And nobody knows if you know what the hell you're doing or not. And that's a that's a scary thing. Would you both be willing to like get people who are like lifetime or very like pro Second Amendment or very into guns and have like a convention where like the people who want more gun control versus the people who actually like know, like who well educated about guns and the law or whatever. And everybody get together and like hash this out and try to figure out what's the best way to go forward and try to come to some reasonable solution. Sure. Sure. But I think the sad thing is uh, we would probably agree on 80% of the issues and it still won't matter because the NRA and the, what is the M what's the other one? The MC. Yeah. I forgot the other one, are these powerful lobbyists who are giving millions of dollars to politicians, and that's why they won't do it. They're afraid to lose votes. And so if they're not even really getting the money, they're raising money on behalf of it. So all the common sense in the world can't compete with the amount of fear um, stirred by the NRA. So even if we all agreed that that that, that would be a, a good way forward, I don't think it would make a difference. And if I could, real quick, about the NRA, their real power isn't money. It's the gun manufacturers, who, can we admit, make a lot of money off of selling guns to criminals and people that are going to do ill in our society. I mean, we talk about the gun violence in Chicago and all these cities. Yes, they paid for the, They paid someone for those guns, and therefore somebody made money off of those illegal, those illegal gun sales. Uh, I, I, I'm not in favor of blaming the manufacturer. That's where we may part ways. Yeah. Well, I'm I, saying that's I, where I, the money I, comes from, is the manufacturers. The NRA's yeah. power is in their ability to to control a voter block. L- that's let me, their let me, power. The NRA's you, power, it comes from, they, they, they control the voter blocks. And right. if I may, one more quick point. Your friends that, that or the, the viewers who are lifelong uh, Second Amendment fans, did they feel like they'd been their rights had been infringed all those years that assault weapons were banned? It was Bush, George W. Bush, yeah. that lifted the assault ban. And one last point, and then I'll be done. You know who's for the assault weapons ban when it came out? The NRA. They have we've watched them go off the right wing cliff, just like the Republican Party over the years. They used to be a more reasonable entity. I want to say I want to ask you a question, Javier, before you get to your next question. Okay. Why do you think at the NRA meeting? When Donald Trump and Ted Cruz and um, Greg Abbott were all going to, all going to this meeting, that the NRA made an announcement that guns would not be allowed at the meeting. Why do you <laughs> think? So. Why do you think they said that? I saw this on Twitter. Um, I can only speculate, but I, I would I would make the assumption that because they had high profile uh, people at the NRA that. Mm-hmm. It's just a no brainer. I mean, you can't walk anywhere where the ex president or politicians right. work are going to be. But we know politicians feel like they should be protected more than other people. Um, but should they? Uh, yes, they should be. Should they but, be protected more than kids in schools? Oh no, uh, I, I think I think everybody has a right to be protected. That's what we have police for, and that's what we have a military for. Uh, I think everybody should feel safe or at least have the ability to feel safe. Right? Well, we don't, though. We don't. Uh, have, what, the 28 mass shootings just since January? I, I've lost track. 28 or 29. I We don't feel safe. There are people in other countries terrified to come to this country. We are that scary thing on the news, that thing we've watched our whole lives growing up. Damn, that looks like a shithole. Damn, that looks terrifying. Damn, those people are killing each other. Welcome, America. We are that scary-ass place to be. The reason is because even if that room were filled with good guys with guns, 
it increases the risk that somebody important might be shot. Now you go to that school in Uvalde and ask any of those parents who lost their child and ask them if that kid was important. I know what people are going to say. The guns are already illegal in the school. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the guy who bought the gun should have had a background check, should have had a psyche valve, should have had training. If we had had those three things in place and not let him buy a gun on the internet anonymously, he would not have had the gun to kill the kids. So if we care enough about our former president and a senator and the governor to put some stipulations in place to restrict your rights to be around them, we should do the exact same thing for every single American. We need to restrict your access to guns because I think those kids are way more important than three old white guys. And I'm hoping that at some point you allow me to come on your show and we could reverse this uh, and have a, a conversation. If y'all would give me the courtesy at some point, uh, maybe uh, ask me some questions and see what I think. Because um, I know that people will make the argument where more people are killed by hands and feet every year than by guns. I don't. More people are stabbed to death every year than by guns. Like uh, these statistics do show that guns are not like compared to other ways that people are murdered. Guns don't make that the top of You're that You're talking list. about one-on-one -on -one individual violence. I would want to see those stats and break it down. It's not like there's nobody running into a school stabbing 21 people. And That's if they did, happening. most of them would survive. Stab right. wounds are far yeah, more but survivable. I, I, think, I think the argument would be like a lot of these things, because uh, of the, the nature of the situation, they're, they're highly politicized. But like, for example, mass shootings happen all the time in the projects, in the ghetto. People do drive-bys and kill three or four people all the time, but you won't see sensational news coverage of it to where everybody's politicians are getting up and they're screaming about it and we need to do something. But of course, somebody went to school and killed all these children. That gets people awoke and emotionally invested. But yeah, like, and, and this happened in Australia them. one time. They took everyone's guns and they haven't had a mass shooting since. What's so hard to understand about that? The question is, how do you get... Do you think if America decided tomorrow to ban all guns and to do a buyback program, how do you think that would actually go? Do you think that it would... It I would know it wouldn't go well. Go like speaks, Australia's went? It speaks poorly for the right wing in America, that you guys are so crazy that if... I if, know some liberals save, who are like really like proud about their guns. I mean, we couldn't maybe so okay. We couldn't get half of conservatives <laughs> to get a damn vaccine to save their neighbor. So the you know, I or I, themselves. I, I, I tweeted right, the we're going off the road. I, okay, hey, hey, hold on. I tweeted yesterday that uh elephants are incredibly compassionate. And if they ever find out they are the symbol for Republicans, they are gonna be pissed. Okay, now he's, he's he's rubbing a little salt in the wound. He's trying to get this, some more comments I, going. Javier, I would love to have you on a podcast because I am dying to know what a reasonable, smart guy like you thinks of these moronic suggestions coming from the paid stooges in the Republican Party. The, the doors. Are the doors the problem? Now it's the doors. I have drastically different solutions than some of the ones that I I'm I've I'm glad heard. to hear that because that's <laughs> one of the... It, it, you guys don't need guns to defend your home. You need better doors. That's Ted. <laughs> that's not me. That's so Ted Cruz. Let's, that's Ted let's Cruz. Let's get through these questions. Let's get I got to the next question. questions. And I want to make okay. sure. Uh, like I said, super chats go first, everybody. So if you do a super chat, you will get answered. Uh, so Joseph Donald says, so what next? If they ever do get rid of guns and someone uses a truck or a car or something worse, do you ban them too? Where does it stop? No, you don't ban them too. That's where okay. it stops. It stops with guns, Joseph. Um, Riley, guns are, guns says, are, guns are, uh, trucks aren't designed to kill people. Cars aren't designed to kill people. Uh, guns have an explicit use to cause damage to the human body. That's what they are designed to do. Riley comes back and says, bombs are incredibly easy to build. What stops a temporarily insane from just so Riley? So, as long as hey, let him finish the so, question. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> God <laughs> damn, now. dude. Just I know, but for audio, because we're releasing this on audio on all my right, show, right. they're not going to know what the hell we're responding to. 
Yeah. I will reread uh, it, please. No, um, no, let Javier do his thing, Michael. <laughs> God, has anybody got a gun? I need to handle this guy. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> He'll just uh, end up shooting himself first. <laughs> <laughs> Bombs are incredibly easy to build. What stops the temporarily insane from just making a bomb and killing massive amounts of people? Okay. Michael. Okay. We're, we're getting into crazy town now here. I mean, well, it's Kermit again. I so know, it's clearly. A, uh, what is to stop me from uh, <laughs> dousing uh, myself in gasoline? What is to stop me from uh, there, anything can be dangerous? Yes, you could make an improvised explosive device. We have laws against that too. But you could just point to every dangerous thing. You could go to the butcher's uh, mm -hmm. shop and say, well, what would happen if I grabbed his butcher knives and started attacking? Like, dude, I have a, so dangerous things. So Kermit, Kermit, here's how, here's how that question sounds to us, okay? That question sounds like this. It's speed limits are 80 miles per hour. And then there's an accident on the road. And then the government comes in and goes, okay, we've done the math. Statistically, uh, at 75 miles per hour, we can reduce accidents by 13%. So they change the speed limit to 75. And then you say, well, what if someone dies at 75 miles an hour? What's next? We go to 70? Yeah. Uh. Uh, sometimes. And then what's next? We go to 65? And then we go to 60? And then everyone's creeping around at five miles per hour. Your concept leads to absurdity. Nobody will do that. Nobody will ban trucks because someone died from it, okay? People die in car accidents, and it's something the entire world has accepted. But we are the only country where this many mass shootings are happening on a regular basis. So to pick a straw man like that and go off into crazy town instead of dealing with reality shows us that you're not ready to have an adult mature conversation about this. Look at the rest of the world and then look in the mirror at what the United States is actually doing on mass shootings and ask yourself if that question actually makes sense to what we're talking about with common sense gun legislation. Your question reads like, bad things will still happen, so why should we pass any laws to yeah. stop any bad things why, from happening? Why even serve... Less bad things would happen. Why even serve breakfast? We're just going to need lunch sometime. Yeah. Come on. Okay, man. this it's looks like a really good question, though, and this person does not seem to be coming from crazy town. Okay. Uh, give me a uh, question from Peggy. says, give me a reason to give up my gun when criminals will not, please. Okay, so if your gun... If you're not allowed to have your gun, that means it's not just you. They don't just come to Peggy and say, Peggy, you can't have a gun, but the criminals can. What they say is we're no longer going to produce guns. We're no longer going to sell guns. That makes it far more difficult for the criminals near you to also get guns. Not impossible, but far more difficult. So at this point, we're not talking about, if you listen to us, you clear out all possible gun violence. We're talking about a drastic reduction. I mean, you have a gun, Peggy. You have a gun. Why didn't you stop the shooter in Uvalde? See, you having a gun doesn't stop the criminal. There was a resource officer armed out in front of the school, and that didn't stop it. There were, there were cops standing outside the door for an hour, all with guns, and that didn't stop it. So you having a gun does not necessarily stop the bad guy with a gun. And I know you may be thinking, but I could, but I would. Please don't take my word for it. Go look up the statistics on how likely you are to hurt yourself or somebody else innocent with your gun versus the likelihood of you actually successfully defending yourself against the bad guy with that gun. It is a minuscule probability. It is damn near impossible. And you're far more in danger by having your gun than you are to defend yourself with it. And I'll say this, Peggy, uh, getting back to my original point is, uh, nobody, I don't want your gun. I want you to get trained, licensed and registered and once you have that, no one's going to come for your gun. But the criminal with a gun who doesn't have those things, now I can tell the difference between Peggy, who's trained, licensed, yeah, she should have a gun, she's got everything, and the criminal who's got none of that, 
Now we can get the gun out of his hands because we can tell right. the difference between the two. But if some guy buys a gun off the internet and gets an AR-15, which stands for ammo right, not uh, assault rifles. It's armor light. <laughs> oh, what is it? <laughs> armor light. Armor Thank light. you. Okay, armor whatever. Light. I just wanted armor to prove light. them. I'm not some liberal who thinks... It... Anyway, <laughs> so now we know that Peggy's got her, and this guy doesn't, and we can get rid of that gun all the easier. So you... The restrictions on you, which are that you need to get licensed and and registered, actually help us get the guns away from the criminal. And you have fewer right. criminals you have to worry about now, Peggy. To quickly answer your question, Peggy, because you are in more danger being around your own gun that you don't even realize. You are in more danger than you are likely to defend yourself successfully. I know it makes you feel better, but it's kind of like having a pet lion. You think you're safer because you sleep with a lion, that lion is very much more likely to kill you in your sleep than he is to save you from a bad guy. So you're not as safe with that gun as you think you are. It's a false sense of security. Now, I just wanted to bring up something because I saw a question, but um, I think I can rephrase it a little better. Um, but in the Second Amendment, it says that uh, a well-regulated militia, like Michael said earlier, but it also says being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. So I know that Michael was speaking towards like the right of a person to have a firearm. How do you deal with the part where it says the right of the people to keep and bear arms? Because well, we be used infringed. to be like Israel. The people were the were going to be the army. We had no military. So you're arguing that we should uh, amend the constitution and, or change the wording or kind of make, do away with it. I would Either be all one for that. Those. But can I just point out real quickly, I said it before yeah. and I'll say it again, every Supreme Court that the Second Amendment was challenged in front of previous to 2006, I think it was, it was the Heller decision, DC versus Heller. Uh, they said that it, the Second Amendment did not give you the right. So the most learned minds on the subject for 200-some years said the Second Amendment does not give an individual the right to bear arms. It wasn't until George W. Bush and the stacking of the Supreme Court, whatever, these are buzzwords that conservatives don't like <laughs> hearing about, but it wasn't until George W. Bush and conservative, modern conservatives that the NRA and others were able to find a case, which was this Heller guy who's, a, you, trust me, you don't want to be associated with him. He's, he's kind of a racist <laughs> lunatic. But he was able, he had what's called standing and was able to get a court, uh, a case in front of the Supreme Court, which was he uh, sued the city of, or the, um, what is Washington, D.C.? What do we call it? We call it a, uh, anyway, a district. Know. And that's it. He, he, he sued the District of Columbia, and that was the first time that we came up with uh, the, the, the Supreme Court in a, I believe, 6-4 decision said, um, uh, no, 5-4 decision said that the individual has the right to bear arms. So ask every Supreme Court and every legal mind before 2006. Next question by Dave Gammon says, what if we get attacked like Ukraine? You cannot walk into a gun show to buy a gun. That's wrong. What does he say? Is that two different things? Is he saying we're wrong about... Yeah. Yeah, I, I tell you, focus on the question, what if we get attacked like Ukraine? Well, no, no, no. I'll let you address the first part, because you know he's incorrect about that. You can, in many states, maybe where you live, Dave, it's illegal. At Dunkin', we're getting ready for sunnier days with our Sunrise Batch Iced Coffee. A bright and balanced iced coffee with notes of cocoa, tangy sweetness, and toasted nuts. Made to brighten every day a little more. So can the sun shine a little more and fill every moment with a little more, more. Because we aren't just chasing sunsets anymore. We're counting sunrises too. Do more with Dunkin' Sunrise Batch Iced Coffee. Brewed for brighter days. Enjoy a medium for $2. America runs on Dunkin'. Participation may vary. Limited time offer. Good for you. But there are literal videos on the internet of a 13 or 14 year old kid who tries to walk in and buy like NyQuil in a place and they tell him no. He tries to buy cigarettes in another place and they tell him no. He goes and tries to buy like vodka somewhere or a beer and they tell him no. He tries to buy a porno mag. Oh yeah, yeah, a porn magazine and they Naked tell him. lady and they say no. They say no and then he walks into a gun, into a, um, uh, a gun show and literally buys a gun. So there, the, the, the ideas of the gun hole loophole the gun hole loop. I keep saying that the gun show loophole Just is that the poop hole loophole. Is the, <laughs> it's my Christianity. <laughs> the poop hole loophole. It's um, the uh, the the idea that you don't have to run a background check. There's not a waiting period. You don't have to do a psyche valve. You can just walk in and go. Oh, I collect 
uh, those nine millimeters, or I collect, you know, that 45 or, or that Smith and Wesson or whatever, and you can just walk out with a revolver. You can walk out with a shotgun. You absolutely can in many states just walk into a gun show and walk out with a gun. So and, yeah. I'm not sure what you're referring to. As far as, um, as far as his question about, uh, us being Ukraine, I mean, look, if the government if the government successfully took our guns, they could just save them. Which is what Ukraine did. These people yeah. didn't have guns. Right. They were told anyone that needs a gun, anyone that wants a gun. Come we'll, get them. Come get them. We'll get them. And we're airdropping guns in for them to give to the citizenry. Ac- so absolutely. Ukraine is a terrible example. They didn't have guns and they were administered pretty quickly, man. And like anyone that wants one, come get it. We okay. could do the same. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to get uh, to these questions. Like I said, everybody put a Q before uh, before your question or question, so that way I know it's a question. Put an I if it's just an insult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So just to let everybody know, I I have David and Michael on because I'm trying to understand exactly what the liberal position is on gun control. This is not necessarily a debate where we go back and forth and try to prove each other wrong. This is about me understanding where they're coming from, how they see the gun control situation and issues and what they would do about it. And I'm you hear from me all the time what I think about guns and stuff like that. And instead of us just arguing, I want you to actually hear what they have to say and think for yourself and figure out the information. And let me let me be clear about something, because you asked us both if we would prefer to live in a nation without the right to have a gun. And I said, yes, that does not mean that's what I'm pushing for. I'm not saying we should take everybody's guns. What we're actually pushing for is some common sense legislation, some basic required training, a mandatory psyche valve and a waiting period before you get your gun and to close any loopholes within gun shows. You should not, if the federal government goes, hey, if you're going to buy a gun, you got to do a background check. And everybody goes, okay, that should be the law. You have to go through the training and the background check. You can't then just go to Arizona, walk into a pawn shop and say, I want that and be able to walk out with it. There's laws, right? The, the, they will do a background check on you right then at the pawn shop. Then why is it that you can go to a gun show and you don't, you can get around that psyche valve. You can get around that background check. Those are the loopholes we're talking about closing. I, what I'm actually pushing for is common sense regulation to keep people safe. I'm not actually pushing for a nation with no guns. Okay, I, I think I, this I one is directed here. towards me. Iron Chart, uh, Charitier says... Charitier. I started wearing, Iron Charitier. Charitier. I, started wearing, I started wearing my glasses, and I can't wear them while I'm recording because the light shines off my I glasses. Know, he doesn't care. It so, looks terrible, doesn't it? See the light. Yeah, well, then I wouldn't be able to see. I don't care about the light, but I will say that care. David Smalley could probably speak to where this gentleman got his name. Doesn't it say in the Bible that like God couldn't Charity. defeat them because they had iron chariots or something? Yeah, he was he was helping somebody kick ass, oh, and then and then yeah. the uh, and then the, uh, the the other people had iron chariots, so God couldn't and defeat God them. Could. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember that story. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, do you think guns make great birthday and Christmas gifts? I, I'm guessing that maybe you know somebody who bought their kids or somebody in their family a gun for Christmas. Uh, me personally, I don't see anything.